Good evening, everybody. Kapotaraf, how are you? Baruch Hashem, thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're continuing in the bet yourself here. So it says, Be'aran katab she'acherin parshua she'amdua b'yom tov davka. She'amdua b'yom tov davka. So some say, right, it happened on yom tov. Uh, in other words, the damage to the uh, knife, right? Be'aran ban pek dalet hishba din nifkema ladin ena yechula lechtof. So Rambam, he says, equates the two things, which are, one is where, uh, you know, the knife got chipped, right, or whatever, and also that it cannot cut, right, it got dulled out. Uh, but it can only cut, like, you know, with some extra pressure, right? Uh, you can cut, but, you know, you got to press hard. Like, then, uh, but there's no, right, uh, there's no chip there, right, there's no... Blemish to the knife. So it's interesting, right? Ramam doesn't differentiate whether this happened on Yom Tov or not, or before. Because uh, this is what language is Ramam. And Mashkizin at Tasakin. So he says like this, right? We're not allowed to sharpen the knife. With the sharpener, which is made especially, right, for that purpose. Because no. that's the normal way. But he says, right, as we mentioned yesterday, you can, you know, if you want to do it uh, by sharpening it, by sharpening on wood or, uh, you know, using uh, right, clay or things like this, or ebon or using stone, that's okay. Then, Morin Davar Rabin. So, oh, here comes Ramadan, right? It says, ah, but we don't tell this in public, right, to people that they can do this. Because, as we said, right, it can, it can lead you to some, you know, pitfalls. We already discussed that. Okay, so that's why, that's why he says that. So he says, why? Because we don't want them to come to actually use the regular sharpener, right? The, that's, that's, you know, always used. But my morning. So says Rambam, what are we talking about? That means that it can cut with difficulty, you know? You got to press down. Eventually, you'll get there, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, or, or let's say, right, it got chipped or whatever. But he says, if you can't really cut at all the knife, you know, like totally useless, 
אין משכיזין אותה, אפילו עץ, על עץ. So then he says, right, we shouldn't even sharpen it in an abnormal manner, right? Like on the wood, as we said, right? Things like this. Why? Shema yavo le'ashkiza b'mashkizet, because he may come to use the regular one, right? The regular sharpener. That's what the Rambam says. Okay. So, um, then he goes on, right, the uh, Bet Yosef. V'dibre Rabbeinu k'dat Rashi. So he says, Rabbeinu, the tour, Paskins like Rashi. V'yeshkan yitur v'dibre Rabbeinu. So he says, in the words of Rabbeinu, there are some extra words there, right? Some excess baggage, as they say, right? Shkatav le'el, v'nif gama, v'rav yom tov asur, because he said, right, that if it got damaged, you know, the knife, on before Yom Tov, it's forbidden. The Chazar Katav Khan Nifkemam Erev Yom Tov Asu. Then he comes back and says, right, that um, that if it got uh, chipped on before Yom Tov, it's forbidden. The Chadada B'Mashkes to sharpen it with a right with a regular sharpener. So what is the tour? What is the Bet Yosef saying here, right? That the tour repeated his words, you know, and it was unnecessary, right? To, you know, he 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 repeated himself. So he says, right, extra words, you know, extra excess baggage. You, know, you can right, dump some of it out, right? Whatever, right? You don't need it. To say the same thing twice. Okay, good. So then it goes on uh, in the uh, Bet Yosef. And now what you wrote uh, in the name of the Itur, that even with a sharpener, that's what the Rosh says, Gamken, Sharem, Katavti, Shi'alat, Dibre, Arif. So Zahiri wrote that according to the Rif, Right, so he says the there the riff says right that you know um, you could use you could use a mill to, to sharpen it right if it got dulled out or dikula right or as we said right a palm tree which is basically a piece of wood right uh, you know no but you're not allowed to use as we said right you're not allowed to use the sharpener right. Um, Ah, so the Rosh comments on that. <laughs> what that means is that even though it's allowed, but we don't tell people to do that, right? You know, as we said, right? Aval, halacha k'rab yuda, but he says, halacha z'akrab yuda, t'yafi mashkezet shel even mutar. So the halacha z'akrab yuda, that even with a um, uh, sharpener, which is made out of wood, which is the, you know, I'm saying not the wood, the stone, which is the good one, right? Even that's allowed, according to Rabbi Yudha. So we see, right, that there's a gamut of uh, opinions over here, as usual, right? You have this extreme, that extreme, right? And somewhere in the middle also, right? All kinds of things. Nice smorgasbord, right? Uh, whatever, right? As, as you see. Okay, so then he goes on. Uh, and now what you said, right, that the reason is because um, they cannot... You can cut with difficulty only. So therefore, you're not allowed to sharpen it. So there, right, uh, it's going to be, you know, the prohibition is going to be because of you're making a clear, right? You're making a utensil. You're fixing a utensil. Same thing. That's what the Ran says, right? But he says, I already wrote that the Ramam gave a different reason for this, for this prohibition. Right? As we said, right, because he may come to sharpen it with a sharpener, the normal way. Right, so Rashi says the reason is because it's too much exertion. Oh, right. So you see, we have here three different opinions about why this is prohibited. Okay, there you go. So, okay, that was a long story there, right? Uh, here we are. So we're done with the Bet Yosef. Let's go to Shulchan Ruch. We spent a nice, right, uh, uh, half hour or more on this, right, on this Bet Yosef. It was a large one. Okay, so let's see what's going on. So it says over here that... Um, I think this one we already did. We have to go to bed. So, yeah, so it says, right, um, okay, so it says like this, so let's say, right, you, you want to use a skewer, right? And 
problem is that it's too long. Right? So you know what you want to do, right? You want to cut it down to size. Ah. So says Shulchan Aruch, asul lechatcho belo lesarafo, right? You're not allowed to cut it down to size or to burn it, whatever, right? Whatever it is. If you want to re reduce the size of the of the skewer, not allowed to do that, right? What's the prohibition? You're making a clear, right? You're making a new utensil there. As we said. So this is prohibited. So then it goes on, and mashchizin et tasakin b'mashchizat shela. Ah, so he says, right, that you're not allowed to sharpen the knife with in the normal manner, right? The, the, you know, the, the sharpener, right? So how many of us, by the way, sharpen knives today, right? We just buy new ones, right? We go to the store. <laughs> do you guys know anybody who sharpens a knife today? Yes, we do often in our home. You you do it in the house? Yes. Yes. Uh, we got two two people. <laughs> incredible, incredible, incredible. Okay. They can be sure. I just wanted to do it that way. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, you know, because we live in a disposable world today. You know what I mean? I thought I thought nobody does it anymore. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Right for those guys who are you know the old fashioned, right? they do things the old fashioned way. Right. Uh, so the rule is. You're not allowed to do it in the normal manner, right? So, right, uh, that's one thing. On Yom Tov, right? We're talking about Yom Tov. Uh, right? Oh, heaven. But what you can do is, uh, right, to, to sharpen it on some wood or some clay, right, or some stone. That you can do. But let's get something straight, right? Because... We already said in the Bet Yosef that the regular sharpener for the knife is made out of stone, right? In those days, anyway. I don't know what they have today, but in those days, it was stone. But did, now he tells you you're allowed to use stone, right? So what's you know what's what's how do we reconcile that, right? Apparently, there's a contradiction here. Anybody know how to solve that problem for me? Could it be like knife with knife? No. No, we're talking about stone. Oh. So, as we said, right, the regular sharpener is stone. That we cannot use. But here it tells you, but you can use stone, right? So, what's the difference between this and that? The use. So, you can get any stone, but it's not a stone that is only used for that. Exactly. Beautiful. Perfect. I don't have to add anything to that, right? <laughs> so... Right. Uh, again, right. To reiterate, what what is what is it? What, what are we saying here? That the sharpener that's made out of stone you cannot use, but just a regular stone, you know, that you picked up from the street, you know, whatever, right? That you can use, no problem. Because that's not the normal way, right? Ah, there you go, right? So that's the story. So right. Uh, okay. Good. Beautiful. Okay. So let's go on. So it says, "Ven morin davar rabim." So it says, right, we don't pass in Rabat, you know what, but we don't tell the public like this, right? We don't tell them in public, you know. Yeah, you can use, you know, a piece of stone, you know, from from, from your backyard, you know, whatever, right? Uh, or use a piece of wood. We don't tell them this. There you go, right? So, why is that? So he brings the reason of the Rambam, right? Which is, you may come to use the regular one. If you, if you, in other words, if you tell people that this is allowed, they may come to do it the regular way. So therefore, we don't tell them that. Let me ask you a question now, right? Uh, good question, you know. Um, so if we're not allowed to tell people, why am I telling you then? Why, why am I teaching you this? I shouldn't be teaching you, no? <laughs> so what's the answer to that? <laughs> so <laughs> the answer is like this, right? That when we talk about, you know, um, you know, teaching this in public, we're talking about, you know, when you're giving a lecture, you know, like, you know, I'm in the synagogue with my hat, you know, uh, right, uh, you know, but right, you know, you you see me right on on the YouTube, right, on Facebook, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Then I shouldn't be uh, saying these things, you know. But here we're learning, you know, we're learning Shulchan Ruch, you know. So that's really something else. We're not talking about that. 
<laughs> so I, I hope you understand what I'm saying, right? You, you got my point. Yes. yes. Okay, good. okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. These things have to be sorted out, you know, otherwise a person can say, what is this rabbi talking about? You know, I mean, one thing he says like this, one thing he says like that, doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. Right? Whatever, right? So we got to make sure we explain everything here. Okay. So what does that mean? When you come to my class, you know, and you're learning Shulchan Ruch and Bet Yosef, you know, you're like from the cool people, you know, like, you know, the cool crowd, you know, that, you know, wants to learn deep Torah, you know, so you're not, you're not my lecture people, you know what I mean? That's already something else. You guys, you guys are above that, you know, you're, you're a different level altogether, you know, so. <laughs> so that's not the same thing. Okay, beautiful. I'm going to make you ladies all Rebetzins, you know, if, you, if you're not already Rebetzins, I'm going to make you Rebetzins, all of you. Except David, right? David's not going to be a Rebetzin. He's not going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, David? Is he there? Okay. All right, I hope he's there. Okay, so his name is there. <laughs> okay, right, so that's the story there. So, as we said, right, we don't teach this in public, this thing. Right, this halakha. Right. Uh, okay, good. So <clears throat> let's go on a little bit. So it says the Shulchan what are we talking about here? That this knife is able to cut with difficulty, you know? <clears throat> so then we say we can fix it, you know? In the abnormal manner. Okay. Right? That's okay. Or, um, Right? Or let's say it was chipped, you know? Ah, so he says like this, right? But if the knife cannot cut at all, it's like totally useless, you know? A total dud. Excuse my language, right? The total dud. So then, right, we shouldn't even do it on the wood, he says. Because he may come to do it with the regular way. So in other words... The thing is like this, right? What's the, what's the idea here? What's the, what's the logic? The logic is like, if the knife is totally useless, you know, then you're like really, you're really fixing it, you know? So that's like, you know, a higher level of, of fixing. So if you need to fix it that much, you know, you can already come to do it the normal way, maybe, right? So, right something like that, right? So therefore, uh, this is the reason why. Uh, this is according to Rambam, these reasonings, right? These reasons. We already gave reasons, other reasons besides the Rambam, but we don't, the Shulchan Ruch Paskins here like the Rambam, right? He likes the Rambam, you know. You know the Rambam is his favorite guy, right? You know that, right? I don't have to tell you, you know. When it comes to Poskim, the Shulchan Ruch thinks the Rambam is the coolest guy in the world, right? Nobody, no, nobody like him. That's why, you know, the, the Shulchan Ruch, right, about 80%, 90% is totally like from the Rambam, you know, straight from the Rambam. <laughs> 10%, 20%, you know, some other things, you know, but 80% Rambam, right? Uh, straight ahead. Okay. All right, there you go, right? So that's the thing. Okay, so let's go to the next one, Gimel. Good. Okay, beautiful. Let's go to this one. So it says here in the Bet Yosef, It says the Rashba in the Tshuva, Mutar litfor of beyom tov. Right. So it says you're allowed to. Oh, interesting story here, right? Um, that you're allowed to stitch. He says the stitch the chicken on yom tov. Shemileu basar. Oh, so right. Well, this is where, you know, you guys who know how to cook good, right? Whoever knows how to cook good, right? So, you know what the really good cooks do, right? When it come, when they make chicken, they put stuffing inside there. Oh, my God. That's really professional, right? Anybody does this, by the way? <laughs> I'm not on this level, you know what I mean? I'm, don't, 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 don't look at me. I'm not on that level. But, uh, right, the, you know, you put stuffing in the chicken, right? Oh, my God. That's a real delicacy there. So says the says the uh, right uh, the, the Rashba here that when you put the stuffing in there, 
right? Then they, what they do is they they stitch it up, you know, to close it, you know, so the stuffing doesn't come out. <laughs> right, so he says that you're allowed to do this, you know, to stitch it on Yom Tov. Oh, wow. Nice. Right? So why is that? What's the reason why this is allowed? Ah, but we're not allowed to write, we're not allowed to hem on Yom Tov, stitch right on Yom Tov. We're not allowed, uh, sewing on Yom Tov is not allowed. So then why is this allowed? So says the Rambam, uh, the Rashba, I'm sorry, the Rashba. Says the Rashba. The reason is because so what does that mean? That this sewing, right, this stitching over here is for the sake of consumption. And that's why it's allowed. As we said, right, labors that are, you know, consumption related, right, are allowed on Yom Tov. That's what we said, right? Same thing here. Okay, hope you got that. So let's go on. So he says, Rabbeinu Yerucham katab bechelik bed, says Rabbi Yerucham, Muliyata kloma shememalim basar betzim betofrim oto katab yushami. He's same thing he talks about, right? You stuff it, you know, with something, right? Uh, so, okay, let me just give you some ideas, right? He says, we stuff it with what? With meat, right? You know, like ground meat that they put, you know, in the chicken, right? That's, they do that, they do that, yeah. You put some ground meat in there, right? Whatever, or something. Some uh, right, uh, good good idea. So, it sounds very tempting. Bed seam, right? Or you put eggs in there, right? Oh, another one, right? Good, another good one. You put eggs inside. Uh, the tofrim and then they they stitch it up. It says Yerushalmi she asur la asotot beyom tov. Ah, look at this! Wow. So he brings Yerushalmi, right? Yerushalmi says it's forbidden to do this. Ah, so how the Rashba allowed to do this, right? Very interesting. He didn't know about Yerushalmi. Right? So I, I doubt that, right? I highly, I highly doubt it. Right? <laughs> he was a big man, you know. He knew all the things. <laughs> so, so then, what's the story, right? What's going on? So, anyway, right. First, we'll read this. It says, Right. So he says the reason why we can't sew it up, he says, stitch it up, is because we can't. We may come to cut it. Right. So, so therefore, he says, Ela ketsad so therefore, like, you know, what, how do you do it, right? How do you make stuffed chicken? You know, come on. Give me uh, some advice over here, right? So he says, Itaken me'erev yom tov hachut ve'asimenu b'machat ve'zaher she'lo yachto hachut dechol ha'machshirin she'afshal la'asotan me'erev yom tov asu la'asotan be'yom tov. So he says, you know what you do? So he says, you know, you you put, you like, you know, put the string in there, right? Uh, on Before yom tov. You do like a preliminary sewing there, right? Stitching, whatever, right? Preliminary. Before Yom Tov. So, let's be precise, right? What is he saying over here? According to the language, right? It says like this. Uh, so he says, Kid said, yes, how should he do it? So he says, you know what you do? Take the string, and push it, right? Put it inside the needle, you know, the little hole in the needle, right? What do they call that? The eye of the needle, right? Whatever is that close to, right? The eye of the needle, right? You put it inside there, right? Uh, so, in other words, that solves the problem, apparently, right? When you do that. Okay. Uh, but it says, be careful not to cut it, not to cut the string. So it says, why is that? Because every preliminary, which is possible to do before Yom Tov, you're not allowed to do it on Yom Tov. That's the rule. Um, that's what it says in the Ravad. That's the end of the book. So Kobo writes this also, right? Interesting. So now we have an interesting machlokat here, right? On the one side, we have the Rashba who says it's allowed. And then brings this rabbi, right, to Rabbi Yerucham, from the Yerushalmi, that says it's not allowed. So, right, what do we do over here, right? What's the what's the solution? Okay, let's see Shulchan Ruch. We'll see, right? How he paskins. Okay. Right, so he says, uh, oh, 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 my God. My golly. So it says, So he paskins like the Rashba, right? He says, you're allowed to sew it up on Yom Tov. Stitch it up. Wow. 
והוא שיתקן מערב יום טוב ארחות וסימנו במחר. אה, אה, אבל לא כל כך אומר, only if you do this, that what? that you set up, you know, the, right, the, the string inside the needle already before, before Yom Tov, right? So basically, like, we're passing like both of them, you know, basically, right? Because the Rashba allows it, right? But, you know, with the condition that we set up from the Yerushalmi, right? Which is, you know, the Rabbi Yerucham said, that if you want to do this, what you got to do is set up the needle and the string already, you know, before Yom Tov. Then you got no problem. Interesting. Uh, so then he says, Shukhanuch, Vizaher shelo yachtoch achut b'yom tov. And be careful, right, not to cut the string on Yom Tov, as we said, right? Why is that? Because, you know, cutting the string would be, you know, like you're cutting something to size. Right? Uh, you know. So that's the problem. So there you go, right? Um, hmm. Wow. All right, there you go. So says the uh, Rama here. Ah, wow. Look what the Rama says. Wow, interesting. So he says the custom is that what? After we sew up the chicken, right, with the stuffing, says what we do is instead of cutting it, the, the string, what we do is we burn it, he says, you know? So burning is better than cutting. <laughs> wow. So, interesting question, right? According to the Ramah here, why is burning better than cutting? I guess you can say, right, it's the abnormal way, right? It's a shinui, you know? Because usually, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do, burn it? On a weekday, right? You'll cut it, right? So now you're doing burning, it's a shinui. So that's why the Ramah says, right, you can burn it. Makes sense. Sounds good to me. With an existing fire, correct? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. When we're talking about... Uh, yeah, good point. Right. It's a good point. We're burning something here. So when you're burning something, you have to have a fire going, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And I, was okay, wondering, we, and I was wondering, when are we using the sharpened knife on the chicken? No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question again? No, I was wondering when are we using the sharp knife on the chicken? But that's a right. different topic. Yeah, it's a different topic, right? right? They're not they're not related, you know. Yeah, I'm... they're not really related, right? Unless you want to put them together if you if you want, which we can try, but we don't <laughs> we don't have to do that. There's no purpose to do that. Okay, whatever, right? So it, it's two, two independent variables here, right? Not really related one to the other. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that's the story there. So uh, okay, good, Baruch Hashem, very nice, um, good. Uh, okay, so I guess we got the whole point here. Yeah. Okay, so you want to make stuffed chicken? Be my guest, right? No problem. Just make sure you set it up before. So here's the thing, right now we have uh, you know Shabbat coming up, right? So. We can practice whatever we're learning here, right? Uh, you know, practically, right? Okay. So yeah, why was I think? Why was I talking about Shavuot? Because Shavuot is next week, right? It's going to be Wednesday, Thursday. Shavuot. And um, so, what I want to remind you is, as you said, right? Existing flame. So make sure you get a memorial candle, right? So you can have a flame to pick from. Buy a memorial candle for two days, right? Two-day candle, right? Okay, that's it, right? That's all you need to know. So we got, I think we have one more here, Dalit. Let's see about Yosef. Yeah, so he brings here, um, 
Katava Agur, right? It says the Agur, the Shem Shibole Aleket, right? Two rabbis here. <clears throat> these, by the way, these names are not the names of the rabbis. They're the names of the books of the rabbis. You know, right? I don't have to tell you, right? There's no rabbi called Agur, right? Okay. So, right, uh, they, they use the book, you know, to, to call it the name of the rabbi. Okay, so, right, so, it says over there, Mutach Lach Toch, right, Eged, Gedain, the Ofot, Mekulasin, the Chutim Tefurim. Oh, oh, interesting. Wow. Oh. Okay, so what is he talking about here, right? Uh, that you have um, your, your, you know, Basically, are cooking some kind of a, right? Some some kind of a animal, right? Uh, which is uh, either a goat or something like that, right? Or a chicken, or whatever, whatever it may be, right? And the thing is, you know that sometimes you've probably seen this, you know, uh, even even today we see this kind of thing. What they do is they tie up, you know, the body of the animal or whatever or the, or the chicken, you know, with strings, right? In order to hold it together, or whatever it is, right? So. What he's saying is that if, if it's tied up like that with strings, you can cut those strings on Yom Tov. You know, there's no problem to do that. That's pretty clear, you know, because the reason you're cutting it is to eat it, right? That's, uh, <laughs> otherwise, how are you gonna how are you gonna eat it like that? Right? So there's no problem with that. Uh, this rabbi also says this. Uh, Shin Yud Zayin. So it says, I already wrote, wrote this in, in a different place, right? Laws of Shabbat, also he wrote this. Okay, there you go, right? So, seems like even on Shabbat you can do this, you know? Because if you don't do it, how are you going to eat, right? Uh, you know. And also, there's a different reason why it's allowed, because it's destruction, you know? You're not really making something, you're destroying it by doing that. So therefore, you know, it's allowed, even on Shabbat. Apparently, right? Apparently. So Katub Tashbet, seven Tashbet, Siman Shin Pei, Shecholim Lisrof Petila O Smartut Shekoshin Bo Avaz. Right? Same thing, right? He says that you can uh burn, right? Um this certain rag that they use to to tie up the um right the duck or goose, right? If they're cooking a you know, goose, right, whatever. Oh, technical <clears throat> or chicken, right? So, same thing, right? You're allowed to burn this thing. Uh, so, what's the reason why? Because, you know, you're doing it to eat it, right? That's the whole thing, right? You need to get it off. Okay, it's pretty clear. So, let's go to Shuchan Ruch, right? Uh, we got that. Right. As we said, you're allowed to cut the strings, you know, that are holding the animal together when you eat. Obviously. Right? So you can cut the strings, right? Same thing he says if you're using some kind of a string, right? Band or something, right? Whatever it is, right? Uh, to, to tie up the, uh, right, the animal, right? Uh, so, you know, once you want to get your hands on it and eat it, right? You don't want to be going, you know, eating through some string, right? Or some band, right? Uh, so that's why you're cutting it, right? Obviously, right? So that's no problem with that. Yeah. This is, by the way, a general rule, you know, which applies to many things on Shabbat and Yom Tov. So the rule is like this, you know, when you're doing something to destroy and not to build something, to make something, it's allowed, you know? So here also you're destroying, basically, right? You're destroying the string. You're destroying the band. You know, you're not doing to make something there. You're doing to destroy the band. Therefore, it's allowed, you know, that's the whole thing. Okay, good. Um, good. But obviously, right, on Shabbat, we cannot burn, right, something, you know. That you cannot do on Shabbat, right? There's no there's no fires going on, right? You're burning something there. <coughs> so the only time you can do that is Yom Tov only, right, obviously, you know. But if you're cutting it, you know, with a knife or something, right, to open it up, there should be no problem on Shabbat even. I don't see any problem with that. Okay, good. So I think there's one more. Hey.
So it says here, um, Katu Mordechi Pet Bet, the Betza Rihitir Betchuba, the Laben Beyom Tov, Kili Shekorin Tarpa, the Laz, Shafilu Bo Beyom, Tartia Peladon, the Akala Libun, Yafe, Tartia Pashida, okay. So yeah, so he, he brings here the Mordechi that, uh, the second parak of Betza, right? Uh, the re over there is matir. He, he allows in a chuva to right lelaben beyom tov kli shikorin tarpa. So what you're doing here is you're uh, apparently you're kashering this right metal utensil, which is called tarpa, right? So this tarpa, if I'm not mistaken, it's what we call today tripod. You know, like it's some kind of a Think that holds the food right on on the flame, tripod, whatever. Belaz shafilu bo bayom tachtia peladon rechakach halibun yafe alia tachtia. So yeah, so you're allowed to do that. Right. So I don't think he's really talking about kashering it. He's talking about more about like burning it for the sake of, um, you know, like for, for your cooking or something, right? Whatever it is, right? So what's the what's the novel idea here? Right, that apparently, right, there's no prohibition of like, you know, you're hardening it, you know, making it stronger, making a utensil there, whatever. Okay, we'll see. Uh, that's what I think. Anyway, it says, uh, and he says another thing. Pashtida, right. So, in other words, even though um, it does harden it, but he says it's allowed anyway. Then it says another thing, right? Which is Pashtida Shil Basar Umishum Tikun Kili Enkan Share Nir M Ke Mechamema Lebashil Tachtia, right? So he says there's no prohibition here of like, you know, making utensils, as we said, right? Why is that? Because it looks like you're just, you know, uh, heating it up to cook with it, right? To cook under it. Mishum Machshirin Nami Leka. So it says there also there's no prohibition of machshirim, right? Which is like preparation, right? Why? Because he says uh, because you need this for cooking, right? Uh, so you know, as we said, right? Consumption related. There's no problem with that either. That's the end of it. Okay. So he says, right? There's also other rabbis who wrote this. Samak, right? So it says you have to be careful, right? That don't wait until uh, it gets cold after the uh, after you heat it up, right? After you. So it says after you right after you take it off the fire, put right, put it right on the food. Because you, you, you have to that you have to bake there. Oh, okay. So right there you go. Right. So now we understand what it what it's really talking about, right? So what I said in the beginning was right. We're talking here about kashring it, right? Uh, so why would you be kashring, right, on this thing? What's the reason why? So he says because, you know, you want to, it was, you know, dairy, and now you want to make it meat, right? So you want to, you need to kasher that, to use it for meat now. So what do you see from here, right? This rabbi says you're allowed to kasher utensils on Yom Tov, right? That's basically what we're saying. Why is that? Because it's consumption related. Or the other way around. So it says, because you don't really need like total, you know, total um, burning for that. Uh, uh, that it should be burned the outside outer layer. So it says, you can do like a small libun, right? Libun has two different levels, right? You know, uh, which is like burning something, you know, burning, charring it. Right? One is very high level, where like sparks come out of it, you know, like, uh, you know, it's really like a high level. You need like a blowtorch for that, by the way, to, nowadays, you know, to get that result. So then we have a, a lighter level of Libun, you know, uh, which is that, uh, so it says, how hot does it have to be? 
that you can put, you know, like let's say some straw in it and it'll burn. All right. The lo gara mi agala de moelat af So it's it's not any worse than hagala, you know, doing it with boiling water. That uh, it's beneficial even for its use. Or oh, right, uh, even if you're using it for fire. Hecha de 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 tera bala if it swallowed something which is permitted. Aval tapa shel goim ah, but it says if you're using now here's the thing, right? All we said until this point is talking about when you're kashering from dairy to meat or meat to dairy, right? One or the other. Why is that so important to know? Because it absorbed, right? The meat and the dairy that it absorbed, right? Whatever. It's, they're both permitted. They're not non-kosher things, right? So when it comes to things which are not, you know, they're kosher basically, but you need to change it from dairy to meat or whatever, so there, we say, right, you can do like a lighter level of libun, of kashring, you know, lighter level. Uh, because it didn't it didn't um, swallow something, right? It didn't absorb something which is forbidden altogether. But now he says, ah, but wait a second, right? Now we have a different thing, which is if you bought this utensil, right? As we said, right, this tripod, whatever it is, right? From You bought it from a goy, right? And therefore, right, the goy used it. He made some, you know, some... Uh, Pork chops on it, right? Whatever, right? So it's, you know, it absorbed for forbidden food. That's already a higher level, you know? It's a different, it's a more stringent there. You know? So he says, right, regarding that, uh, that you need like a higher level of libun, of, of kashring, when it comes to something which was, you know, it absorbed forbidden foods. So it has to be, right, that it's going to, the outer layer is going to come off. It has to be so hot. Right? Uh, but that you cannot do on Yom Tov, you know? That level of kashring on Yom Tov, he says, you cannot do. Why? Because now people see, right? It's recognizable that you're doing it to kashring, right? And we don't want that. We don't want it to look like you're kashring. So he says, it's the same thing as like, you know, Kashring utensils right, with boiling water. You cannot do Yom Tov, says it. So look what he says, right? That you cannot do Hagala on Yom Tov, you know, which is, you know, kashring with hot water, with boiling water. That you says, that you cannot do. Why? Because everybody sees that you're doing your kashring, you know? It's apparent. It's clear, you know? That's what it says in the Mordechi also. Interesting, right? Wow. Okay, so let's see the Shulchan uh, on this. This is important halakha. You know, very, uh, very practical. So says here Shulchan Aruch, right? Mutar lelaben beyom tov kli barzel shafil shafu bo peladon shel gvina veachar libun yaf yafu bo pashtida shel basar. Right. So again, right? What are we doing here? You're allowed to kosher a utensil, right? That was used for dairy, in order to use it for meat. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Vehu she she keshit titlaben itenulo oto ala machal miad, aval imhu belua benivela benzeba asul alavnu afilu leafotbo tavar hetel. So he says, right, that only applies when, as we said, right, when. It, it's not so apparent that you're doing a kashring here. It looks like you're just cooking. You're warming it up, you know, for use, for cooking. So that's why it's allowed in this case. But it says, if it, you know, but if you're doing, you know, the higher level, right, which is, as we said, right, you bought it from a goy, and he made, you know, with that pork chops there, you know, right, whatever, right, uh, he made bacon on it, right, whatever. So that you have to kasher on the higher level, and that's going to be very apparent. People are going to see it. So therefore, you cannot do it. That's what he says, right? Same thing, as we said in the bit yourself. Uh, okay. Um, so it says, even if you want to use something, right, which is permitted afterwards, you're not you're not allowed to do that. So you can't do a high level of kashring on Yom Tov. What does it mean, high level? It means that people see that you're kashring, right? That you cannot do. It has to be like camouflaged, you know. <laughs> if you if you're camouflaging it, you can do it. If not, otherwise, no good. Right. Okay, so says the Ramah here. 
והוא הדין די אסור להגיל כלי, זאת אומרת, הוא אומר את אותו דבר, כמו שאתה אמרת לך, אתה לא יכול לעשות את הגלה, הוא אומר, נכון? מה זה אומר? אתה עושה את הגלה עם מים, כמו שאנחנו עושים, נכון? אם אתה עושה את זה, נכון? אם אתה עושה את זה, נכון? אם אתה עושה את זה, נכון? some people just buy new utensils <laughs> they have a special one for they have a special set for Passover you know but uh, for us poor guys who can't afford that right so we uh, you know we cash it <laughs> so uh, whatever right okay depending on depending on how, how rich you are right okay so even if you're poor you even if you're rich you can do it no problem <laughs> doesn't really matter okay so right as we said uh that's what Ramah says here so then it goes on ומותר ללבן שיפוט שצלו בו בשר שאינו מלוח ורוצה לחזור ולעשות בו ביום טוב. אה, זאת אומרת, רמה היא מביאה משהו אחר שאתה רוצה להגיד, נכון? מהרב מפראג. אבל הוא אומר, נכון? מהרב מפראג. שאתה אומר, נכון? 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 Now you want to use it right uh, you know to, 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 to roast something else. So that skewer needs to be kashered. So he says therefore you, you're, you're allowed to do that. you can kasher it. So let's just get this idea straight, right? What are we talking about here? Um, You have to know a little bit of background here, right? To understand the salakha. Uh, the rule is like this, right? You cannot cook meat until you soak and salt the meat, right? That's the rule. So, but there's an exception to the rule, which is, right, if you're roasting it on a fire, let's say you're barbecuing, right, whatever, so you can cook that meat, on the, roast it, without salting it, if you're doing a barbecue. Because what happens is, right, that the, the fire... draws out all the blood from there, you know, so there's nothing left. So what he's saying, the Ramah is like this, right, that once you used it like that, your skewer, you know, for meat which was not salted, and you made roasted meat like that, even though it was allowed to do what you did, but now you need to kosher it, right, to use other meat. So therefore he says, right, what you, what you, you can kosher that. on Yom Tov, in order to use it. So, according to the principle that we said, right, why is this allowed? Because it doesn't, it doesn't look so, you know, loud, right, so apparent that you're doing it, for kashering. It just looks like, you know, you're, you know, you're cooking meat, right, you're roasting meat, right, so it doesn't look so clear to people that you're, you're doing it for the sake of uh, kashering. So, therefore, it's allowed to do that as well. That's the idea, right? Okay, very good. So I guess we'll stop there, Brother Hashem. We have a, still, still a little bit more, but uh, we'll do it next time. So uh, we'll see you, Brother Hashem, tomorrow night, which is going to be Yom Yerushalayim. Haba Lenu Netova, Brother Hashem, right? That's the day that we conquered Yerushalayim from, from the enemies, right? Uh, from uh, from our, you know, our cousins, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so right, uh, that's, that's the story. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so... Uh, Tomorrow, Wednesday is Yom Yerushalayim, and then Friday is Rosh Chodesh, right? Uh, that's the way it goes, right? It's a nice week. Baruch Hashem. Full of holidays. Okay, so, Baruch Hashem, thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. Laila Tov, Chazak Baruch. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you, Rabbi. God bless.